Um, today we're going to look more at the technical side, um, behind the curtain, so to speak. Uh, let's start off talking about how Rapid Review functions. Uh, rapid Review is for forensic review of video after it's been captured. It isn't a real-time tool uh, that, that's watching what's going on right now. Uh, we're not quite the precogs yet. Uh, the video is still recorded by Milestone. It still stays on your Milestone server. Uh, so everything you're used to functions exactly how you, you would use to if you're a normal surveillance system. Uh, video is actually exported uh, from Milestone and then imported into Rapid Review. After it's imported into Rapid Review, that's where all of our fun begins. All of the video is imported into cases. Uh, each case will group um, all of the video and then all of the objects discovered during the analysis for the video that gets exported. Think of each case as like a bucket uh, full of water, and there's no water flowing between it, so there's no video or information flowing between cases. Uh, if you look on the right, I have those two cases, uh, one for Australia and Milestone Systems, and then the facial recognition. You have the larger thumbnail that kind of shows you an overview of the case, uh, just big broad picture of the video. And you'll see below there's uh, three pictures, there's three thumbnails in the Australia Milestone Systems and four in the facial recognition. Those are video clips that have been imported into the case management uh, to begin to work with. You know, and as we've gone through this, um, I've actually said analytics and video processing a lot, um, but what's it actually mean? Uh, simply put, video analytics is just the software, Rapid Review, watching the video. You can't see little finger quotes, but they exist. Uh, it's watching that video and looking for objects. And as it finds those objects, it writes them to a database. That's a bit oversimplified, but we only have 15 minutes, so it works. Um, so I sort of think of it like that Rapid Review would see a person. Um, and as that person is walking, it would check and see, you know, is that have a shirt? What color is the shirt? What direction are they walking? Um, and all of that information gets stored into the database for quick searching afterwards, because it's much quicker to search a database than it's going to be to search raw video files. Um, and as you can see, as we went through this little talk, we actually had two slides full of uh, objects it's finding. So it's finding a ton of stuff. So we talked a little bit about how what Raptor View is doing. I was pulling that video in. We didn't see exactly what it's doing, but we kind of get an idea of how we're pulling that video in. Let's talk about what we need to actually run uh, Rapid Review. So this big slide really is all there just to make sure we know that Rapid Review needs to live on its own server. Uh, Rapid Review cannot live co-resident with a management server or a recording server. Again, the Rapid Review needs to live on its own hardware. Uh, there's some port conflicts and some component conflicts between the two systems. Uh, Next up, we need to make sure that we have a GPU in the server. Um, our GPU will need to have at least 8 gigs of RAM. You'll want that for production. Um, you can get away with like 6 gigs of RAM for a very small system or a demo system in your office, but you would never want to go into production with 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, the bulk of the processing of all of the video is done on the GPU. Uh, Raptor U really leverages a lot of those tensor cores. Uh, so with the bulk of the processing being done on uh, the GPU, we need to be sure the GPU included with your hardware. Um, always be sure to work with your local solutions engineer or your preferred hardware vendor when selecting your GPU, uh, because not all GPUs are going to be sorted in all platforms. Um, we have a quick brief list over to the right of some common GPUs you're going to run into and if they're tested and certified. Uh, you're going to see a lot of the Quadro series. That's more of the uh, workstation card or the enterprise class card that's really built to run a lot of these workloads 24-7. Um, we also need to make sure the system has current NVIDIA drivers. Um, as of uh, this time, you need to have at least a 461.72 or higher. Uh, I believe 470 or higher is current. You want to make sure that is current. Um, the installer will not install and update that for you, so you need to be sure you install and update that. So we have a slide for example builds, uh, but before we dive into that, let's talk about throughput. Uh, simply put, throughput is how much video we can process in what amount of time, um, like how much video we can process in an hour. And remember that Rapid Review is an after-the-fact forensics tool. It's not real time. So throughput is measured how much we can process in one hour. Uh, we're not going to size the system based on how many cameras we have, but rather how much video we need to process and how much time we need. And that can truth to be a little bit of a guess. Um, each build will have an estimated throughput for reference. Let's look at the example builds and then talk about, talk about throughput a little bit more. 
So if we look at the small build, um, we can see there's a few things that kind of grab your eye as you look at it. I mean, first we have 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, we need a Quattro P220 um, and a mixed-use SSD. There's a few things that jump out. Um, as it turns out, video is actually buffered in RAM. So as a rack of use processing the video, it pulls it off of the hard drive after it's been exported and imported in, and then stores that in RAM to work with it. Uh, RAM is very, very quick, much quicker than even your enterprise cool SSDs. So it really becomes a boost to the system to have that much RAM in there. Uh, we also have the GPU, which probably caught our eye, but you know we were pretty well expecting that. We actually had a slide not too long ago talking about how we have to have a GPU. So that's not too surprising. Uh, and the mixed use SSD. So without getting too overly uh, tech speak, or as my daughter would like to say, nerd words, um, there are three classes of SSDs you generally hit. Uh, read intensive, mixed use, and write intensive. Uh, read intensive is the drive you commonly see. If you go to Amazon and type SSD in a search box and those Western Digital Blue drives pop up, that's your standard read intensive drive. Um, that's the drive that's normally recommended for your OS. Um, it's a lot of your consumer grade drives. Mixed use drives are actually the next step up. Uh, you go to Dell and you're buying a server and you say, I need enterprise class SSDs. That's what you're going to get, that mixed use SSD. Uh, they support a little bit of a faster write than the read intensive SSDs and they have a decent enough price point. They're not overly expensive. Uh, the third type of SSD, which isn't used, but I mentioned to Reese we should talk about them, uh, is your read intensive or your write intensive SSDs, WI. Um, this is what you're going to find in like a, a flash storage or something very, very quick. They are easily three times the cost of any other storage you're going to find, so we don't really need to worry about those. Uh, but that mixed use SSD uh, becomes useful for the database. I mean, if we're processing video and pulling a ton of objects out, we need to be able to quickly write all those objects to a database, so a fast mixed use SSD can uh, help with your system performance. Uh, and as we look at this, we also were talking about the throughput. So we can see for the small build, uh, it's estimated to do 10 hours of 1080p video uh, per hour. So if you had a customer with 10 cameras and they said, we want to be able to go back and review footage for the last hour and we need for all the cameras and we need to do that in about an hour, we know the small build will work. Um, as we start building up, let's take a peek at the medium build. Um, the only thing that really scaled on here, you're going to kind of see the GPU change from, from a Quattro P220 to a RTX 4000, and then our processor, like an i5 to an i9. Again, we're increasing our compute power so we can process more video. I mean, we uh, take a big jump in the GPU, so we can take a big jump in how much throughput we have. Uh, with this medium build, we're getting about 23 hours of video at medium activity per hour. So that becomes, again, a good benchmark for your customer. And again, you don't have to hit this as a minimum because this is an after-the-fact tool. So if you do have 25 hours of video that you need to process, it'll just take a little over an hour to get it done versus being closer to an hour. Um, you'll also notice the drive space increased a little bit on the medium build. Uh, this is less for system performance and more for just the size of the system. If it's a medium-sized system versus a small system, we're probably going to have more video artifacts. We're going to have more of those little clips of video and little pieces of snippets from the database telling, telling us where video is at. So we're going to need a little bit more storage. Uh, lastly, as you probably guessed, let's take a peek at the large bill over at build in the far right. Again, a big jump in the CPU. You know, we went from a single i9 to a pair of Xeon Silvers. That's a decent sized jump, and we just flat doubled our processing, our GPU power. We went from one RTX 4000 to two. That's a pretty cool server. Um, the other thing that becomes interesting is we actually jumped up on RAM. We, we went from 64 gigs of RAM to 128. So what's kind of happening right there is we're hitting the point where we have enough compute power that we actually can start processing more video than we could fit in that 64 gigs of RAM. So we increased the RAM to give us a little bit more performance. And again, you'll see that the storage also finally increases as well. We sell that increase because we're probably just going to have more video on the system.